everyone. I welcome you to CEC lecture series. I'm Nupur Chavla, teaching English literature at Maitre College, Delhi University. Today's lecture is part of the ongoing series um, on the short story, and it is titled "Short Story by Temsula Ao: Three Women in Laburnum for My Head." Now, this is of course the second uh, part of uh, the lecture. In the first part, uh, we had uh, talked about uh, Temsula Ao as the author, who is also a poet. Uh, she was an ethnographer, and uh, she also wrote short fiction. Uh, she's a uh, you know uh, a writer from Nagaland, and uh, uh, you know uh, originally wrote in English, and uh, you know uh, of course while her works were uh, translated quite widely in the regional Indian languages, and also of course uh, even in uh, global languages as well. And uh, she was around just until the other day, which was uh, uh, till last year. She uh, passed away just last year, and. Um, uh, she was a, a, a name well known um, uh, in connection with uh, writings from uh, northeast of India, right? And um, uh, the short story collection from where we've picked up uh, today's story for discussion, uh, the collection titled uh, Laburnum for My Head, also received a Sahitya Academy Award, right? Um, and uh, uh, along with this, we also discussed, uh, you know, uh, broadly the uh, narratives uh, or the narrative details of the three women uh, that is the story and uh, you know what are the uh, 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 plot points that one notices as we read the story right so we figured that at the center are the three women uh, martha medemla and lipoktula that is a young girl uh, her mother and her grandmother right so uh, this is what we had established in the uh, previous lecture now, uh, in this one, uh, in this lecture, we are going to look at uh, some of the concerns which come through, uh, you know, uh, in this narrative, right? The first thing that we say is that, uh, you know, uh, the story seems to be representing the idea of history in symbolic terms. Now, you might wonder that, you know, uh, in this story, we see, um, uh, you know, narratives or thoughts or experiences of three women. So, where does the idea of history come in, right? Um, there is, we see, an interconnection between the lives of these three women and this establishes a link between the three generations, the young girl Martha, the middle-aged Medemla and the old, that is Lipoktula. So, we see that there is a kind of a link being established uh, between different, uh, you know, periods of time in history, right? So, we say that this link is a symbolic one. Now, what does it symbolize, right? It symbolizes continuity. It symbolizes relevance. It, one can also say it symbolizes a connection or a kind of a past-present continuum, right? So, the fact that uh, you know, uh, uh, there is uh, there is a relatability between what Martha went through, what Medemla went through, and also what uh, Lipoktula, how she lived her life. This link or this connecting thread gives us a sense that how not only is it that the lives of these three women were connected, at the same time, it starts to act as a symbol of the fact that how different periods of time or different uh, one can say um, you know uh, uh, epochs in history also are interconnected right so past present and future they are not separate identities but they are connected so maybe what happened uh, you know uh, let's say in the 50s uh, for uh, uh, nagaland is very well connected to what is happening maybe in the 21st century in the state. So, one can say that through this kind of an intergenerational representation, the author wants to uh, make a point of uh, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, or she, uh, she wants to uh, project a particular idea of history, that is history in continuity, right? Now, 
The next thing that we say is that, uh, uh, you know, why would uh, the author want to talk about history in such symbolic terms, right? This is a very natural question for all of us to have. Um, what comes to mind is when we, when we think of this question is that, you know, history is crucial to any kind of a marginality, right? Any person, any, any group of people that are uh, maybe not a part of the mainstream and they are on the margins, history plays a crucial role for them. Of course, history is important for all others as well, but particularly when we talk about, uh, you know, somebody uh, in a position of a marginality, history becomes an important one. Why? Because you see, um, if, we, if, if we look at the uh, case of uh, Nagaland in uh, particular, you know, the ethnic uniqueness of uh, the people in the region as compared to the country's mainland, uh, you know, kind of necessitates an emphasis on one's history. So the fact that they are ethnically unique, right, uh, as compared to uh, the people in the rest of the country, uh, it uh, becomes an important uh, thing for them to emphasize on their history, to make their history known, to make their history, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, as part of uh, the uh, conversations of the other histories of the country, right? Um, and we also say that, uh, uh, you know, history is also a source of identity because who you are is not only dependent on what you are today, but it's very well also defined by what went before you. What were the, or what are the roots? What is the kind of past that you can trace back uh, to, right? So then, uh, you know, uh, we say that, you know, uh, history then is also a source of identity. It is an access to one's roots, traditions, beliefs, and therefore, all of this put together, history becomes one of the means of establishing one's selfhood. So, while talking about people from Nagaland, history then becomes an important concern for an author like Temsula Ao, right? And we see that, um, as discussed in the uh, first part of the lecture, that the story shows how the characters have individual histories which then cons constitute a larger collective pattern, right? Now, in fact, in the story, um, uh, you know, uh, the grandmother, that is Lipoktula, she, while she is, you know, kind of uh, confessing that how she uh, tried to avert the incestuous marriage, she is the one who made sure that the man whom her daughter loves uh, you know, would kind of uh, go back on his word of getting married to her. All of this was engineered, one can say, by Lepoktula and she confesses to this fact, right? And when she is confessing or when she is giving us the details of this uh, uh, aspect of experience, she makes a point uh, um, and she says, and I quote, uh, Imsutmen wrote a curt letter to Madame La breaking off the engagement and the rest is her history, unquote. Now, you see who is um, Imsutmen? He was the man that Medemla loved. So, her own mother, that is Lepoktula, says that he wrote, after she convinced the young boy, he wrote a curt letter to Medemla, breaking off the engagement and then she says the rest is her history history. Now, what do we mean by the word her history? This really strikes you as a reader. It's a history, it's an individual history one can say, experience which was unique to her in the conditions that surrounded her. What were the conditions? She falls in love with the person who happens to be her half-brother, but she's unaware of it. And because of that, she cannot get married to her and therefore she has to be a single mother, right? So that is her history as uh, Lipoktula herself says. So one can say that the three histories 
of these three women, they come together. But what is important is that um, in this coming together, there is a very clear link established between the three generations. They are not, uh, you know, histories in silos, if you can call it that. No, it's not that. It is a history which is very well connected. And that's how, uh, you know, uh, while talking about the three generations, Temsul Ao seems to be making a very important point about, um, you know, how to view history. It is not something which is uh, disconnected or uh, it, is, uh, it, it is not a collection of, uh, you know, periods which are uh, disconnected from one another. No, there is a sense of uh, a commonality. Uh, how past gives way to the present and which then goes on to define the future. So we need to look at, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the past in that sense when we look at, uh, you know, the uh, concerns of the Naga people, right? Um, the second issue that we also see emerge in uh, the story is that the story presents a view on motherhood. Now, you see, motherhood is, um, of course, an experience that is, uh, 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 you know, kind of deified. Uh, it is associated with, uh, uh, one can say, uh, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a, a responsibility, a tenderness, a very, uh, and, and there's, of course, a very uniqueness to uh, motherhood as well because of the entire process of conceiving a child, to carrying a child and then of course uh, bringing up uh, uh, the child and that's why the mother, uh, the mother is uh, you know very often uh, termed or uh, termed as a nurturer. Now what does Timsula Ao feel about motherhood? So you see what we see, uh, uh, the, the foremost thing that we need to acknowledge here is that uh, the story presents a woman's view on motherhood, right? And uh, uh, what we notice is that she expands the definition of uh, being a mother. So for Temsula Ao, uh, the, there is no one uh, definition of who a mother is or how is motherhood to be experienced, right? So she expands the definition making space of different conditions under which a woman experiences motherhood. And this is where I would say the, the credo of the writer lies, that she is opening up this domain. She is making space for multiplicity of conditions, for different experiences, which can still come under the umbrella of motherhood. So that is, one can say, uh, a true contribution of Temsula Ao. Uh, uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, uh, capturing women's experience in all its complexity, right? Uh, the next thing that we can also say is that, you know, the fact that she uh, talks about the idea of motherhood or, uh, you know, or uh, the fact that she, uh, you know, represents the experience of being a mother in its complexity, this can also be her way to critique the social stigma and also the conventional mindset. Now, the conventional mindset views a woman as a mother in a very particular way that she gets married, she conceives a child, she takes care of the child and um, there are certain qualities associated with being a mother, right? And so, so that is the traditional mold in which um, a mother is viewed um, and any kind of a deviation from this mold then uh, is stigmatized. So it seems to be the case that Temsula Ao has her eye on that to destigmatize those conditions. So what we uh, uh, let us not also forget that you know Temsula Ao is the greatest humanist. So what she's doing is she's making space for multiplicity of experiences. So she's saying that, that there is no one way of being a mother. They, they can be different kinds of motherhoods, they can be different conditions which, uh, you know, uh, make a woman a mother. And these different conditions uh, come to the fore through the narratives of these three women. 
right? Uh, in fact, what comes to mind here is this quotation by Medemla. Uh, this is the time when uh, Martha confronts her mother uh, that, you know, why do I look different um, than you and grandmother? Explain this to me. And um, uh, that's when, uh, you know, um, the reality of the fact that, you know, she was an adopted child is told to her and the fact that Medemla uh, is a single mother, uh, this, all these facts are revealed to Martha. And once uh, Medemla, that is the mother, has revealed these facts to her daughter, Martha, she makes this statement. She says, and I quote, so now don't you think that I am your mother, though in a different way, unquote. So what's important over here is that she's asserting that even as you might look very different from me, you may not resemble me, but I'm still your mother. So she says that don't you think that I'm your mother, even though in a different way. So different way means that there is no, con as the convention would have it, we do not have any similarity of features. You look very different from what I am. Or, or, or from what I look, um, but just, a, you know, kind of uh, a similarity of physical uh, appearances is not supposed to be a stamp of the fact that one can be or is allowed to be a mother of the other or, or, or can be safely called as the mother of the, uh, of, of, of the child. So she says, I am a mother, but in a different way. Now, what is this difference? This difference, of course, is that she chooses to be her mother, even as she may not have biologically conceived her, but she takes care of the child. She nurtures her, she brings her up, she makes her the individual that she is. And all this is also a part of the process of being a mother, right? <clears throat> uh, at another instance in the play, there is another quotation which uh, uh, where we see, you know, Temsola Ao also celebrating the experience of motherhood. And let's look at this quotation. She says, the three of them just stood there for quite some time, a strange trio, as though enacting a ritualistic affirmation of the power of mother love to mesh the insecurity of innocence in the magic of an emotionally enlarged truth." Unquote. Now the narrator says this at a time when Martha knows the fact of her, uh, of the fact that she's adopted. Medemla tells the daughter this and grandmother also is there when this conversation has happened. And to culminate this scene, the narrator makes this statement. The three of them, they stood there for quite some time in silence. A strange trio. Now, the word strange is very important. Strange doesn't mean that something which is, um, you know, uh, I would say um, something which is, uh, 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 you know, something which is to be discarded. No. Strange in the sense different. Why different? Adopted child, a single mother, and of course, a mother who made sure that her own daughter didn't have an, an incestuous marriage. So it was a strange trial, as though enacting a ritualistic affirmation of the power of mother love. Which means what? That once the truths are told, they stand together in the same solidarity as mother, daughter and grandmother in the affirmation of the power of mother love. So what is important then is not the role of the mother, but what is important is the love or the emotion behind what makes a woman a mother. And, and there seems to be a kind of a tacit, uh, you know, uh, agreement between the three women after they've, uh, uh, you know, overcome this hurdle. So one can see that in the story, you know, Temsula Ao really emphasizes on uh, the truth of what it really means, uh, you know, to be a mother. Uh, then 
uh, you know, uh, uh, one can also say uh, the third thing that, you know, conventionally mothers are projected as uh, self-sacrificial, that they would sacrifice themselves for the children, etc., which of course is, uh, is uh, uh, true to a large extent. Uh, but Temsula also shows a slightly different reality from this. And this is uh, evident in Lipoktula's uh, uh, narrative. So, she takes a difficult decision for the sake of a larger good. And this difficult decision that Lipoktula takes involves the unhappiness of her own daughter. What does she say? She says at a, uh, at a time, little did I know her future will be blighted by the secret of my past, unquote. What is the secret of her past? That she was raped by another man, right? And she says, I did not know the future of my own child will be blighted by the secret, will be tarnished by the secret. Why? Because as the twist of fate happened, that her own daughter fell in love with a boy that was her half-brother. So she feels very sad about that fact. And that is the time when, uh, you know, she uh, takes this difficult decision of uh, ensuring the, uh, that the two do not remain together. And it is for the sake of a larger good, right? Uh, so she does mention that, that uh, because uh, the social fabric of society would not allow such a union, it might be the reason of my daughter's unhappiness right now, but I have to do this. So here, even as, so uh, we notice that the mother is also doing something which, which discomforts the daughter, but again, it is for the larger good. So that is another feature that Temsula Ao presents of being a mother in this uh, text. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, at another point in the text, the narrator refers to Martha, Medemla and Lipoktula as, and I quote, three different kinds of mothers, unquote. Now, why are these three women different kinds of mothers? Martha, um, uh, who was in love with a young boy, she conceives a child even before they get married, right? So, after the conception, of course, their, their marriage is formalized. But that's a different kind of a motherhood, which, of course, is not sanctioned by society. Second, Medemla, a single mother, yet another kind of a motherhood. Lipoktula was mother of Medemla, but that secret was not known that the father was somebody else. So what Temsula was showing is three different kinds of mothers, as the narrator says. And one can say that she gives equal amount of dignity to all three. There is no judgment on any, right? And that's why we said at the beginning of this discussion that she seems to be expanding the definition of motherhood in the story. Uh, and at the same time, there's also a celebration of the experience of being a mother. So referring to, uh, you know, Martha's husband at the time of her delivery, the narrator says, and I quote, feeling like an intruder, he was feeling like an intruder in the sacred ceremony, unquote. Now, what is this sacred ceremony? This is a time when Martha uh, has just delivered a baby. There's a midwife there. There's grandmother and there's her own mother. And once a child is born, the three women are seen again together celebrating this moment amongst themselves. And this, at this time, the man feels, uh, as the writer says, like an intruder in the sacred ceremony. Now, the word sacred is very important here. As if the, that moment of uh, or, or, or that uh, effect of, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that all three were mothers of even as of a different kind was a sacred experience, right? And uh, the man is seen as an intruder here. Now, this, of course, can raise a lot of questions, uh, but uh, we would like to focus on the fact that um, it's seen as something sacred. So, while uh, Temsula Ao might be opening up the definition of what it means to be a mother, at the same time, she also celebrates it as something which is sacred and which is good. 
right? The last and a very important point that she uh, that also comes through in the story is a perspective on womanhood, right? If you look at the three women, it tells us about the features of each of them. Now, Martha is a young girl with evolved sensibilities. She does not buckle under pressure when she is being differentiated because of her different looks. She says, and I quote, Mother, I may look different from you or grandmother, but I feel no difference in my heart, unquote. Which means what? That she is emphasizing on the difference between looking different and feeling different. So, it's immaterial if you look different, but you must not feel different from the others. So, again emphasizing that the, the, the looks, the appearances have a minimal role to play. The point is to not make someone feel different. And Medemla also, uh, you know, as a single mother remarks, am I abnormal or just a different kind of a woman? Unquote. Again, we see that she is incredibly, uh, you know, self-conscious. I mean, not, not exactly self-conscious, but she is conscious and she is very well aware of the different condition of her life. But she accepts it with dignity, right? She doesn't uh, judge her own self, but she accepts it with dignity. So what we see, with the perspective about these three women that comes through is that they are courageous, they are strong, they face the circumstance with dignity and a lot of pride. And that is a point which Temsula Ao makes through the story, The Three Women. So while she talks about motherhood, she talks about womanhood, she also talks about history. All these three important issues coming through in this text, which is titled Three Women from the collection, The Laburnum for My Head. Thank you.